thank you so much for staying with us. And in case you're just joining us, this is a daybreak. We've just started uh, the conversation that uh, we wanted to highlight this particular morning. We want to look at issues uh, shaping uh, that are developing in the country this particular morning, of course. And uh, we begin with what has made headlines on the front pages of the dailies. I'm looking at the standard. But before I uh, let you know um, about that, let me just run you through who I'm hosting this particular morning. I have with me in studio uh, from my far right there, Mushimua Richard Onyonka, the senator for Kisi County. We also have with us David Gishengo, the executive, Diana Gishengo, I beg your pardon, uh, the executive director of the Institute of Social Accountability. And we have uh, Honorable David Oching, the member of parliament for Genya constituency, and uh, Jerry Maina, the woman representative for Kirinyaga County. Ladies, gentlemen, karibu sana. And we begin with uh, the front page of uh, the standard as just we look at the, 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 the issues shaping conversation, moment of truth there. Uh, has, 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 has been highlighted by the paper. And of course, pictured is the head of state, President William Ruto. And uh, President William Ruto has said that he has had enough of the protests, but the youth are relentless and uh, they will push for this until he listens to what they have to say. We expect that Nairobi, there's going to be a lot that is going to take shape. Listed there are the hotspots, Mlolongo, Parliament Buildings, Nyayo Stadium, Uhuru Park, JKIA entrances, City Cabanas, Outer Ring Road, North Airport Road, and of course, 15 other counties. There's going to be a replica of what will be happening in Nairobi County. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to hear your quick thoughts on um, you know, events that should be taking shape today, coming against the backdrop of calls that the Gen Zs should now put brakes on the protests, that the government has had their grievances, that they are going on with implementing some of the things they promised to implement. I don't know what your quick thoughts are with regards to whether the youths are justified to go back to the streets this Sorry. particular morning. I'll begin with Shimo Onyonka. Good morning. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. Uh, the truth is it's uh, very interesting times. Um, if you look at the... Uh, the events that are playing out in our country today, uh, it's unfortunate because you have our government for the first time, which is actually destabilized and um, whose legitimacy is on the test. Uh, then you have young Kenyans who have taken it upon themselves, um, and for, the, for those who would care to listen and look, it, it's not a joke anymore. The reason is, yes, some of these young men, when we talk to them, they say, yes, we want to get out of the streets. But look at what you have right now happening at the same time that you're telling us to get out of the streets is when scandals are coming out, how the government have si signed uh, agreements with foreign companies to own all our national airports. Senate did not look at it. National Assembly never discussed it. Nobody knows what is in the agreement. And this, 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 this is, you know, this is the dysfunction of our, our state. That what you don't expect is what comes out every two, three days. All right, there's an, another scandal brewing in. NTSA is trying to get a private individual company, which nobody knows about which is supposed to be providing technology, which is supposed to, the idea is fantastic. But why can't we do things within the law? Why can't you advertise and say, this is what we want, this is what we are looking for, let the best come and compete, and whoever you are, if you're the best, will give you the work. And these things are continuing and continuing. Number two, number three, I, I want to mention to the president, there are certain things when you have such crises that you don't pronounce yourself on. On conflict resolution, when you know that you are against the wall and when you know that there's an opportunity for you to engage with, for lack of a better term, your adversary or somebody who's disagreeing with you, you then don't go out there and say, if you don't stop asking me to do for you what you want, then you'll see. 
all the president could have said, I've been listening to these young men. I'm really trying my best. I'm working hard to make sure that I can engage them. Uh, there are offers, there are alternatives, there are challenges we are facing. These are the, the, the constraints that you're facing if you are unable to solve their problems. Number three, number four, I don't think the, the government, and I understand this one completely, mm -hmm. the government is not organized enough for it to come up with a narrative that is believable. You're, you're, you've just read the news that yes, that there are certain things which the president is doing to try and sort out the problems which exist. As a result, this, if you ask me, I have been watching, if you look at the newspapers, there is nowhere where the president has said, we have done this, we've done this, and this has been over a period of time. Now, the two, three, four things which you're asking, they need a little bit more time for me to engage. The other issue that brought out all this again I think the Gen Z's were actually comfortable and relaxed that the president had dismissed his cabinet. He gazetted them. He dismissed them. He didn't send them on vacation. He didn't say, I have asked my uh, members of the, of, the, of the cabinet to step aside, for example, which has happened before in our country. Right? I saw Honorable uh, I mean, um, Wetangula saying there was a time when there was an issue in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs when I once worked there, and, the, and Wetangula was asked by Kibaki to step aside. And he steps aside. The investigations continued. I think it was after two months when it was found that there wasn't anything that was making him culpable. He then came back to his office. Now, you have said all these people have underperformed, all these people have let you down, all these people have not done what you expect them to do. You told them to go home. Now you're bringing this group, same people, some of them who have got dubious characteristics, some of them who have gone, have got issues which have been repeating themselves, and these are the ones, again, all you right. are telling this, and right. these, these are the people I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. Those kids know each All right. and everyone. We'll talk about us. the cabinet shortly. Yes. Um, just also, Diana, your quick thoughts about what is happening. When you had the head of state, first of all, over the weekend, uh, talking tough mm -hmm. and saying enough is enough, he actually went ahead to list what he said he has done to show goodwill, that he's actually listening to the Gen Zs. What were your quick thoughts? Um, when I had the president this weekend, I wondered, is the president listening? things have shifted fundamentally that Kenyans no longer have faith in the executive and in parliament. They are therefore speaking directly to what they want. Then the, past, the president says, I'm going to protect the nation. Which nation? The boundaries. It can't be. You can no longer ignore the majority. And I'm sure the president is well advised by the Kenya National Bureau of, Sta of Statistics that we may call them Gen Z, but surely the youth in this country are the majority. Mm -hmm. Registered voters or not, they are Kenyan citizens, they are the majority. It is not about who can vote. It is who is a Kenyan citizen from birth. Yes. All the way from birth. Mm -hmm. Those are the people he ought to be protecting. And how to protect this nation right now is to embrace the governance reset that the Gen Z's are calling for, saying, let us live within the Constitution. Let us stop the wastage. Let us ensure that all institutions work as per their mandate and without interference. So when the president gives um, Gen Z's address down, Not media address down, civil society address down, says, oh, you're being funded, it even takes away from them. It trivializes what our youth have been doing every day showing up in the street. You may call them idle, but they usually have other things. We don't always see them on the street. By the time they are doing that, it is a sacrifice, a purposeful sacrifice for this nation. And the, the thing that we should be doing is listening to them, listening to them. A period, um, the president has been offered an opportunity to now rise above, 
the um, election promises he made, the party baggage he may have had, and just listen to the Kenyan conscience. So it's really um, unfortunate Probably to hear him speaking just tough. Just to follow up on, on what you said there, um, and to put the president's remarks in context, uh, just, just also adding in the voice of what we've had some religious leaders saying over the weekend, and even the deputy president saying over the weekend, that we have heard you. We just want you to give the government time to implement some of the promises that they said they're going to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And going back to the president, he actually listed even the withdrawal of the finance bill, uh, his cabinet. Of course, uh, I, know, I know a lot of people have issues in, with the list that has been put out there. But he was sh trying to explain that I've actually had you, but give me time to, 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 to get to where we are going. Should the young people then put breaks? And even in this uh, wake of talks for dialogue, should they put breaks as this crisis is being resolved? What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, no, Th there are no breaks. We are on acceleration mode. We have a country to redeem, to retrieve from a very deep hole. If you put breaks, we are not sure how we'll balance. We could easily sink deeper into the hole. And look, um, what has the president done? He dissolved cabinet. He quickly appointed another, the same cabinet. He rejected the finance bill and immediately praised the MPs who voted yes and said, history will judge that these ultimately are the people who care about this country. He went ahead and signed the Appropriations Act into law knowing very well there are no financing measures for that particular budget, meaning he signed that he will borrow more, that he will borrow more. Where is a genuine commitment to address the grievances, the problems that are being raised? Maybe the president needs to pause and reflect properly with all of the civil service on what it would take to respond. In the meantime, allow Gen Z's to keep uh, petitioning the president, the parliament, then those are spaces for dialogue. The, dial the, the Gen Z's have not asked for dialogue. They're just saying, take action on corruption. Take action on the killer cops. Have we gotten a statement from the inspector of police, from IPOA of arrested police? If anything, the only thing we've seen from DCI is a report of the, of the uh, alleged Kware murderer, okay? Mm -hmm. The people who have continued to kill the youth, the youth that we are seeing being buried every day, we've not seen any response any response showing that anything is happening on that front. All right. Uh, Njeri, what do you think about, you know, this um, talk of lack of sincerity with regards to how government is responding <coughs> to the grievances raised by the Gen Z's, that on one side they are saying this, but on this other side, it's sort of like the government is taking a totally different direction from what the young people are saying, yet they come in public and speak as if they are doing exactly what the young people are asking. What do you think about you know, the, the allegations of double speak within government on managing this crisis in the country? I don't understand the frustration of young people. And um, what I can say is that factually speaking, the high rate of unemployment, the system failures that we're experiencing, they're not a making of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. We have had successive governments. And if you look at the way we have been doing things, the young people are telling us that the system is no longer working. But the system is not working anymore because quote unquote, it has been created that way by the Kenya Kwanzaa government. So we must also have a very honest conversations with ourselves. And um, I remember when the young people first came out on the streets, they had a list of demands. Top of them was reject the finance bill. And then um, it came down to do a cabinet reshuffle or dismiss the entire cabinet. And the president refused to assent to the bill, even though parliament had passed it with a majority. The president went ahead to dismiss his entire cabinet. So from the perspective of where I stand, it seems as if some people have also hijacked the Gen Z agenda to push their own narrative. We have 
a nation that is founded on democracy. Every five years, we go to elections and we vote the popular candidate who becomes the president of this nation and forms government. And what worries me is, have we really seen the full extent of anarchy? Is that what we want for Kenya? How far do we want to go? Because less than three years down the line, we will be having another election period. And I do understand the young people want to participate in governance, but it must be done so within the confines of the law. Because if we go beyond and above to anarchy, we have seen um, that the protests were really peaceful when they started. And then we started seeing looting, burning of vehicles, burning of property, and that is against the law. So are we saying that we want to push for accountability to the extent of wanton anarchy in this nation? Is that what we are really saying? Because if we want to hold the government accountable of the day, if we want to hold our members of parliament accountable, I remember there was a call for um, recalling of members of parliament who voted yes for the finance bill. I mean, that conversation has been lost. It's neither here nor there because we cannot see a constructive form from the perspective of holding everyone accountable. It seems as if there's another agenda to topple the presidency, right. and that is where right. the worry is uh, uh, Ching, pegged on. Thank you, thank you for seeing that. Mushmo Ching, the president is saying he has had enough, but the way the young people are acting seems like they have also had enough with what is happening in this country. So between the head of state and the Gen Zs, who has had enough? None of, them. None of them. None of them. Who was happy? Because let me tell you, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm, I want to give free advice to my president. Yeah. He's not had enough. Mm -hmm. he sh not, he's not supposed to have enough. The president is supposed to have the highest level of elasticity in terms of emotional patience. And he must develop it. He, he can't have enough. I mean, the issues that are being raised by the so-called Gen Zs. I believe they're Kenyans. Before you call them Gen Z or call them youth, mm -hmm. they're Kenyans who have genuine issues and grievances they have raised. And I believe that we've missed the point by more than a kilometer in the sense that we have made a wrong diagnosis that this is a political problem. It is not. Stephen, mm -hmm. if you see the way we are trying to address this matter, Oh, bring in the opposition. Let's have dialogue. Oh, you know, somebody is funding this. Mm. It is a wrong diagnosis. Mm. Mm. These are genuine issues. Let's address them. And the president had, has a cardinal duty not to protect his government, but protect the country. country. These two things were separated. The Kenya Kwanzaa government must be distinct from the Kenya Republic. They are two different things. None of them, in my opinion, is a threat today. No. The issues being addressed or being asked for by the Gen Zs are genuine demands. So if you are hungry today, you feel it in your stomach that I'm hungry, I'm feeling hungry. As if Onyonga, Onyonga comes up and tells me, that my hunger is being instigated by Diana here, I'll feel bad about it <laughs> because the hunger is mine. I don't have to be told that I'm hungry because I'm feeling it. So by telling us that somebody is trying to, and I know this for me has been a very interesting moment, that the president, the government of the day had a stellar opportunity to reboot. We were given a, a, a golden platter to reorganize this country works politically, economically. Mm. But instead of, instead of taking that opportunity, you are looking for the cause of these problems. There's, <laughs> there, there's nobody is to getting anybody. All right. The issues, be, uh, just give me a minute if you don't mind. The issues being raised are issues that not just the Gen Z are, are, are raising, everybody in this country wants corruption to be addressed, wants cause of living to be addressed, wants tribalism to be addressed, wants the runaway you know, opulence of arrogance of government be addressed. The issues that, in my opinion, can be addressed, and I would want them to be addressed. And so, trying to catapult and make this an issue of all-inclusive government, GNU, is missing the point. 
let's address the issues as they are. And I want to just tell the president that our constitution and our constitution, these ladies and gentlemen, these boys and girls could picket and demonstrate every single day of the year under the constitution. And that's why it will never be enough. So it can't nobody, be enough. Nobody has they are allowed enough. to demonstrate they can do so <laughs> every right. single day of the week, every single week of the month, every single month of the year. Because okay. that's what the law says. And, and so just, just to put this to, to arrest my opinion, let's listen to each other. Let's not threaten each other. Let the Gen Z's not threaten government and let government also not threaten Gen Z's. Let's get a meeting point. Let's talk to each other in a genuine manner that the one side doesn't see that they are being railroaded into a particular solution. That's what I would say uh, th this morning. All right. Mwishmi um, Onyoka, very quickly as we head over to the break. I, I have had an incredible morning today. David, thank you. Um, <laughs> what you said, I couldn't have said it better. The reason is this. Our country is broken. I can sit here for one hour and I'll tell you how Two trillion shillings is budgeted for, for stealing. I can sit here and tell you, you can't take our children to the hospital. If the county governments are dysfunctional. We don't even have running water after 60 years of independence. We can't take a child from ECD, bring that child to primary school, take that child to junior secondary, take them to university. We spend 70 billion shillings on bursaries. Are we crazy? All right? The structures and the basic fundamentals about our country are not on. What David has said, the president by now should have gotten teams which are directly asking, what is our problem? Why are we the way we are? And this is what, I mean, the truth is, and I've said this here before, we have sat on this table here in this studio we have been analyzing what is the problem with our country. Have we ever found what the problem is? This is what I'm saying. That is the responsibility at this moment because of where we are of the presidency. And the National Assembly leadership must take it upon itself to come up with solutions that are going to be agreeable and admissible by the interested party. In these parties, in this case, it is our young people. It, for me, the system is broken and unless independent, genuine people. I mean, I'll ask you the truth. How many times have you seen the control of budget saying, these billions have stolen, have been stolen, this money is not there, this is happening today. How many times have you listened to the Auditor General talk about how billions and billions of shillings are being stolen from our health se sector, from, uh, how many times have you heard how Nairobi's city county just started, and it's not about Sakaja. This is a system that has been inherited that needs to be deconstructed for Nairobi County government to function. All right. Mwishmo Nyonka, allow us to put a comma on that particular note. Of course, we are coming back to continue with this particular conversation at Citizen TV Kenya is our platform on X. You can engage us. Of course, we would like to share your feedback with my panel this particular morning at Safina underscore Ching as well. But for now, allow us to take a very short break. We are coming back with much more.